Okay, so let's hope this works now. Um, yeah, I was looking at Green's functions. So, so let me write down a Green's bare Green's function, which I will write as Gn. Okay, where these phi's are bare fields. Okay. Now this object is um, independent of the renormalization scale mu. Right, because bare quantities do not depend on mu. There is no mu in the in the action. Okay, this mu comes when you uh, write the fields and the couplings in terms of renormalized uh, fields and renormalized parameters. Okay, so when you have lambda r, then only you will get mu. But here, because this is in terms of bare quantities, there is no mu. So it doesn't depend on mu, and of course, it doesn't depend on any scheme also independent of the renormalization schemes. We have not subtracted any infinities. Okay, so there is no reason why scheme should affect this. Now let's write this Green's function in terms of uh, reno um, renormalized Green's function. Okay, so Gn is equal to this object which you have here. Now each field phi I will write as z phi times phi r and remember these are constants okay they do not contain any momentum dependence or any x dependence. So this is root z phi to the n okay times Gn, but now with renormalized fields because we are denoting by Gr the Green's, uh, Green's, Green's function that you construct with Gr uh, with renormalized fields, and of course this is a function of epsilon, mu, and lambda r. Okay, let me write this z also explicitly with this, its arguments. So z of phi, it depends on epsilon, mu, and lambda r. Okay, see since the left hand side is independent of all uh, this mu and um, scheme and all these things, but G depends on it. So that G depend the dependence um, in G has to be cancelled by the dependence in Z. So Z also has to depend on all these um, variables epsilon mu and lambda r and, and m r also. I should have written MR also. These are the parameters in the theory. But now you see that the original uh, action, okay, or the Lagrangian had only M and lambda. These were the only parameters in the bare action or bare Lagrangian. Okay. But when you do renormalization, when you write everything in terms of renormalized fields, you are writing in terms of MR, lambda R and mu. Right? So you see that you have two parameters here. So your theory is really controlled by these two parameters. So once you specify what M and lambda is, and I'm still thinking of epsilon as being finite. So once you specify uh, for a given epsilon what m and lambda are, then you have fixed everything in the theory, meaning what is the physical mass of particles that's fixed, 
what is the probability of producing um, a certain event that is fixed okay those things are fixed but here you see you have for the same action for the same theory instead of two three parameters so clearly all the three are not independent okay because here you have two here you have three so it's possible to um, choose different values of mu okay uh, or let me put it this way um, so um, let's look at the um, theory from this point of view where, where you are using only m and lambda the bare parameters okay so you have um, uh, concluded all your uh, conclusions you have found out what is the physical mass when you have chosen a particular value of m and particular value of lambda okay so given that fixed choice of m and lambda bare parameters okay you have found out what the physical mass is what is the probability of producing a particular final state let's say two body final state when you are colliding two particles a three body final state when you are produce pro colliding uh, whatever number of particles okay you are fixing the initial state you are fixing the final state you get numbers okay depending on the initial and final momenta you have all these big table of tables of numbers okay now you choose some value of mu given that value of mu that you have chosen find out lambda r and mr these numbers what their value should be such that you reproduce those entries in the table okay meaning you reproduce exactly the same uh, physical observables having the same physical values given the choice of mu you have made okay and the lambda r and mr okay so once you do that you are still talking about the same theory okay because all physical observables are same whether you choose m lambda or mr lambda r and mu now what you do is because you have three parameters here okay you choose choose a different value of mu now okay now choosing a different value of mu will still be okay because you will be able to change lambda r and mr okay because not all three are independent so accordingly you change values of lambda r and mr such that all the physical observables are, are reproduced exactly the way they were before okay meaning your new choice of mu and accordingly adjusted value of lambda r and mr they should give you exactly the same physical mass as you had earlier and uh, the same values for other observables okay so that you can claim that you are still talking about the same theory and not different theory okay and this will happen because simply because you have two parameters here and you have more than two parameters here so there is there is a redundancy in choosing uh, in, in these parameters okay so you have two here three so you can choose one of them and vary it and accordingly you should vary these lambda r and mr such that m and lambda do not change okay the the effect is effect is what you want to arrange is that changing mu should not change m and lambda and that you achieve by correspondingly adjusting the values of lambda r and mr okay which means that once a theory is given to you and by a theory i mean these observables are values of these observables are fixed then these parameters m and lambda are really dependent on the choice of mu you make okay so instead of writing just mr and lambda r i should write mr of mu lambda r of mu okay these things so for for a given theory meaning given choices of lambda and m we can change values of value of mu provided we adjust or we change the values of mr and lambda r 
such that lambda and m do not change, right? Because lambda is a function of lambda r, uh, m r and mu, and m is a function of lambda r, m r, and mu, okay? And if I could arrange that lambda and m do not change, even when I change mu, then clearly all the predictions for the observables, they will not change. Okay. So I will, I should write then Gn x1, x2 up to xn is equal to z phi n over 2 where z depends on these variables. Okay, now I am making this notation explicit by putting mu as an argument of lambda r. And of course, it also depends on the external momenta. Okay, that's also a parameter. So you see that z till z phi depends on mu both explicitly and implicitly both explicitly and implicitly through lambda r and mu r and m r sorry okay so there is a mu dependence that comes through the arguments of m r and lambda r that is the implicit dependence and then you also have an explicit dependence on mu here okay I, let me go back and show you somewhere here okay I don't think we have it here but you see um, what finite parts you subtract is up to you and any uh, any dependence on mu that you get okay uh, when you are renormalizing that also you can subtract okay because mu is some some finite, uh, you have chosen it to be some number, that also you can subtract, some, some mu dependence you can subtract. So z, uh, this uh, renormalization, renormalization constant z will in general depend explicitly also on mu because you are subtracting some finite parts. Okay, now um, here is a remark that when you are doing MS scheme or MS bar scheme, okay, in these schemes, in these renormalization schemes, you only subtract the, the pole parts and also in the MS scheme and in, in MS bar you also subtract uh, things like log 4 pi and Euler gamma. Okay? So at one loop, of course, this is how it appears and clear. it's clear that at one loop Z phi will not depend explicitly on mu okay? because what you are subtracting will only have the pole and uh, no mu dependence. Let me go back and show you. I hope I'll find it this time. Here. Okay. So this Z lambda Zm, they depend only on lambda r here. Okay. There is no explicit mu dependence. So here, now I have already argued that lambda r should really be written as lambda r of mu. So the mu dependence in Z comes through the dependence on lambda r. Okay, that's a statement of course true at one loop because that is something you have seen explicitly. But uh, it is true that this statement is even true to all orders. Okay, no matter at what order in, in lambda r you are, the dependence on mu will be only through uh, lambda. 
okay and also mr will not depend on uh, will not appear in z phi so let me this is an all order statement i am not giving you the argument for it but i am just stating the result um so the remark is the following in ms and ms bar schemes okay where we subtract only the pole terms the dependence on mu in the renormalization constants zi where i is phi or m enters only through the coupling constant and it doesn't depend on on mu explicitly and it also does not depend on on mr it cannot depend on mr because you see z is 1 plus something now 1 is dimensionless and if mu is not allowed it cannot appear explicitly then mr ca cannot also appear because if mr appeared then the object will be dimension full okay the term that you will be writing will be dimension full the only way uh, mr could appear would have been if mu also appeared because then you can make such ratios mr over mu which is dimensionless so it would make sense to add such a dimensional dimensionless function to a dimensionless quantity here okay but since mu cannot appear okay mr can also not appear so uh, it's not so evident from uh, one loop calculation that mu will not appear but it's uh, is something you can argue that whatever mu dependence might appear gets cancelled okay when you are looking at ms or ms bar scheme so in such schemes uh, which is ms and ms bar our renormalization constants i sh we should write as so in gen in general these are um dependent on all these objects but in these schemes they only depend on epsilon and lambda r okay so this is good something we know about the dependence of these renormalization constants on mu and uh, that is something we are interested in because if you look at um the bayer greens functions this does not depend on mu right hand side does and um g n depends on mu in a certain way okay square root of z depends on mu in certain way such that the dependent gets cancelled because on the left hand side you have mu independence okay so we will analyze further uh, these objects in the next video